I am going to start uh, with one that came in on the chat box before it gets run over. Um, this is a clarification for Dr. Lee's study. Um, did you use like a natural rainwater or rainfall for this or uh, what source of water did you use? So yes, um, the, uh, the water is a uh, groundwater. We used a portable rainfill simulator for the study. So the water is pumped out from underground and then um, goes through the sprinkler system and uh, um, sprayed onto the plot. Okay. And then another question here for, uh, well, I guess it could be for anyone really, is to know, um, have you heard about any other research that's been done with the runoff or like tile drainage? Look at the resistance in tile drainage. I, I'm not aware of any, but then we don't do a lot of tile drainage in Nebraska, so um, that's not really a, a system that we look at here. Um, if, if it was being done anywhere, I would kind of think maybe Iowa State would have some data on that, but I, I don't really, I can't really speak to whether or not they've looked at that there. I think, yeah, that's right. Um, I think someone at Iowa State, Michelle Super, they have done some studies with field studies with uh, um, drain tiles. But yeah, we haven't done that kind of work in Nebraska. Okay. Um, and here's a question for Carlton uh, from Heidi. Um, this is, think about the research that you're gonna be doing here soon talking about if it's possible to detect resistance in the manure without the MS that you're looking for. Um, and then also if antibiotic libraries are available um, to use with your, the LCs. Sorry. Um, so the first part of your question asking about, are there any other ways to do it besides LCMS? So um, that's traditionally the way to do it just because it can be done the chromatography is ideally separating the samples or separating the compounds and then the high accuracy of the mass spec to actually detect those is typically the way to do it. I think beforehand that you can do it via ELISA or other like assays that can detect the antibiotics, but those are the main points that are how they're working now. And then in regards to your second question about libraries for detection. So I, I believe there are libraries out there and a lot of research already being done and conducted for antibiotics and to know what to look for with like the mass spec and the liquid chromatography. One of the hard things again is the uh, being able to extract the antibiotics out of the manure in and of itself and then one of the bigger questions is in terms of the processing is uh, as the antibiotics are coming out and they're being processed throughout the manure treatment, either via the abiotic factors such as like heat or the change in the pH or via biotic factors of the microorganisms metabolizing them. Uh, it's hard to determine what those metabolites are in some instances. So like for oxytet, they're epimers and they're, they kind of change conformation, but we're still trying to determine if these other metabolites are significant and if they have any influence. And then the kind of, I think that's where we should be going and trying to generate these libraries of antibiotic detection. So I think that's definitely somewhere that is moving towards. I'm not 100% sure if it's already out there, but I think we're starting to, you're kind of starting to see it and as more and more people get involved with this field. Well, um, I have a question kind of based on that, and this could be for any of you, but in terms of talking about mitigation, what do we know about um, what a sort of minimum or a safe level of antibiotic or resistance in our soil or runoff or manure would be, or do we? So I think that's a really interesting question, Mara, because um, we hear a lot about we need to reduce our antibiotic loads, we need to reduce the amount of resistance in the environment or in, in different systems, but reduced to what or or you know what what's our target it's we don't really have um a health effect associated with a concentration of antimicrobial resistant bacteria in soil or in runoff or anything like we do with 
nutrients, you know, nitrogen in groundwater or phosphorus in surface water. So it's really hard to say what's a target we're looking to reduce. Um, you know, I, I think that you just you bring up a very good point that we can we can keep reducing it, but to what point? What's what's a point that's going to um, have a positive impact on human health or uh, environmental health? I, I don't think we know that. Uh, um, here's a question for Dr. Lee again on um, the differences that you saw with the ARGs, the tetracycline and the other ones, um, kind of a clarification on why you think that that happened. So the question is why the um, the chemical compounds behave different, like the three antibiotics we tested in the field, why they uh, behave? Well, the question says ARGs, um, so, but I guess you could talk about the antibiotics as well. Why, why would those differences were there? Yeah, so maybe I can start with the antibiotics. So the different chemicals, they have different chemical properties. Some of them tend to be more hydrophobic, tend, some tend to be more hydrophilic. And some of them tend to be more susceptible to photodegradation, some of them more persistent. So, and, all, um, and those all kind of impact their fate in the agricultural runoff. And in terms of ARGs, uh, it's, it's similar. It's kind of depending on the bacterial host that contains the ARG. Some of those bacterial hosts may not survive 24 hours after land application. And then the concentration of those will be relatively lower. Whereas the bacterial host is more persistent, they, 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 they maintain the concentration in the field long, for a longer, for longer period of time, and they're more, um, they're more persistent in the, in the runoff, so they will, they will probably have an initial higher concentration. Um, and then also another impact is what will be the background concentration of those resistance genes naturally occurring in the soil? Because a lot of the resistance are, um, uh, a lot of antibiotics are produced by uh, microbes in the, in the soil environment. And then there are naturally occurring resistance genes. So for different resistance genes, if, there are also, if the soil naturally has a higher background, then it's easier for the linear regression we mentioned about earlier to meet that background concentration. And then they tend to have a shorter setback distance requirement. Whereas for some resistance genes, they, don't, they have a very low or not existing in the background then we will really need a longer setback distances to bring the concentration in the runoff to a very low level to be considered that's um, dropped down to a, to a background level. So that's why for both resistant genes and, and the antibiotic chemicals, it's a range of uh, um, recommended setback distances. Well, maybe I'll, I'll go on to this other question also related to that in terms of the setback distances. Um, the question is, is the, hunt, is the 230 feet a minimum? Um, I think you said that this is a worst case scenario, but um, maybe you can elaborate on what you think would actually be a recommendation. Yeah, so this, the 213, this is, a, this is the, the longest distance from that table. Some of the antibiotics and some of the resistance genes require a shorter distance to meet the background level. So, so, that, so that 65 meter or 213 feet is a kind of a worst, it's kind of a worst case scenario to cover all the antibiotics and genes we tested. And also for the field studies we did, um, the first runoff is, the, the first rainfall simulation happens 24 hours after the manure application. So that's a very short distance for the antibiotics and for the ARGs to degrade it naturally. So that's another kind of a simulating a worst case scenario. And also the meters of the particular distance we kind of recommended um, applies to the, 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 the site that we use with a certain slope, with a certain rainfall intensity duration. Those are all factored in into the, uh, the concentration of those um, genes and antibiotics in the runoff. So yeah, definitely there'll be more studies need to cover different um, slopes and different rainfall intensity or even different soil types. Okay. Well, here's one for, I guess all of you can um, answer from Wayne in Manitoba about um, whether you've done 
work or know of work, I suppose, uh, looking at the pHMGH to suppress um, the microbial hazards in animal manure. Um, then he recommends a paper from Dr. Matthias Ule, maybe? I don't know if any of you guys have done work in that field or know of some. Um, I have not, and I've, um, I'm not really familiar with um, the work that's been done by um, the individual that, that has been referenced here. So we'll have to check that out and see exactly uh, what it is that they're working with. Yeah. Well, thank you. Then we'll, we'll look it up. All right, I got a couple questions from Rick Kelsch about the, um, these are both related to Dr. Lee's uh, project. One of them is, um, what is the AMR basically attached to the runoff or the soil? And then the other is on how uh, the manure was applied in this case, uh, application or surface broadcast injection or corporation. Yeah, so um, so, yeah. so we, um, there's, there's some further analysis. I didn't report it here. We do try to see, uh, to, to kind of attribute how much ARGs in the runoff was really contributing from the manure particles that was washed off and how much was from the, uh, the soil particles that, would, uh, that was kind of eroded from during the, during the runoff event. Um, it turns out that they're both contributing and it really depends on the setback distances. For the shorter distance, the manure was a major, more dominant contributor and what towards the downstream, I mean 18 meter, 20 meters, and then the soil started to pick up. So um, I don't have the, the detailed number here, but that was the general, that was the general trend. Um, so that was the first question. Um, and the second question for this particular study, it was a, uh, it was a surface, surface land application. Um, we tested the different land application, including injection, uh, broadcast and incorporation in a, in, a, in a separate study. They do make a difference. Um, the, the broadcast was the one that uh, um, kind of more prone to lose antibiotics and ARGs, uh, whereas the other, the other two, uh, they tend to result in the lower concentration of antibiotics and ARGs in the runoff. 